So because of this innate form of grasping to the me, the, to the ego, uh, slowly when the uh, child gets uh, at some age, so he will develop this feeling of I. And after thinking about what is the propriety of this I, oh, this is my. So this is not something happening in a magical way. We say in Buddhist philosophy, everything is interdependent. So there's causes creating that, this form of ego that's already there in the mind. Mm-hmm. And this uh, ego actually uh, is something that we say that is uh, kind of impermanent. Because we say the true nature of the mind is pure and luminous. All the things that are uh, impure are not the real nature of the mind. They are just impermanent. So that, that's why it can as an end, we can put uh, stop this thing. And which is the way to overcome this ego, to be free of that, is through the meditation. So Buddha he said that uh, there's uh, so many subjects um, of his teachings, like we say there's 40, uh, uh, 84,000 subjects of the, his teachings, the Dharma. So uh, if we condense all uh, these teachings, we can condense all in two categories that are the calm abiding and special insight. So ego is not something permanent, it's something that we can get free of through meditation. It's the same thing with the sun and the clouds. So the sun is there. At times there is clouds uh, veiling the sun so we cannot see very clearly the sun but the clouds do, uh, don't make part of the sun so sometimes they are there and sometimes they are not there something different so same thing we explain in Buddhist philosophy about the mind and the ego ego is there yes with the mind yes but it's not something permanent something is different and we can be free of that mm-hmm. So Buddhist teachings also give many other examples to uh, better uh, understand the mind. So for example, they take the example also of the uh, uh, water. Uh, at the source, the water is pure, but after example, if humans put some pollution, contamination, so water becomes unclear and polluted. But the nature of water is not the pollution. It's because some people, they put some temporary things inside. So same thing with the gold. Uh, you have this uh, gold. Uh, but some people, after to get more money, they put mixed together with the gold some other stuff that is le- of less value. 
but the, the value of the gold is still the same, but just he polluted or contaminated with other stuff. So the same thing with mind, pure, and ego. Mm. So in Buddhist philosophy, we say ego is something uh, cause of suffering, negative. Mm, yeah. So I explained to you why this ego is negative. Ah, yeah. Danzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzinzin
you know, uh, people. So this way, other people are not interested with us. So we lose people around us also because of ego. So we can, uh, in brief, we can say that every kind of problems, lots of problems that we experiment in our daily life comes from ego. Just think really by yourself. Think about where is coming source of my problem difficulties. Oh yeah. And <laughs> so for sure you don't need to believe about these things but I explain to you just in the Buddhist philosophy how we explain things for example everything is interdependent in a series of cause and effect so even now example if we experiment having a good life you know having good health good family we have pleasant life with harmony and all these things we experiment positively now this is, in the Buddhist context, we explain this is a karmic result of having done good things in our past life as, uh, you know, cherishing others, having like compassion, love and good actions toward others. So now we experiment the good results about these actions. 